gentlemen. So we've had Mustang Madness. We've had all kinds of madness going around here, and now we're down to Jeep Madness. But this is a 1978 Jeep CJ. First of all, Bob, tell me what a CJ and an FJ and an LJ, what is all that? Well, this is nothing more. Thanks, Ken. Since we'll be here for a little bit. So this is nothing more than a delineation of the model line of the Jeeps, right? So it's not considered in this range a Wrangler, although there's a lot of people out there look at it and go, oh, cool, it's a Wrangler, right? Well, back before the Wrangler actually came out, there was like YJs, JKs, CJs, right? Like there's a yeah. whole line of all of these things that are just a delineation of the model, right? Like is it two-door, is it the four-door uh, Grand Cherokee, is it the Cherokee style, the X-rays? There's a total difference of like what is going on. This happens to fall under the CJ5 line. And it runs, I guess, but by, by year, like the Corvettes, the C. You talk us a little bit about the C1, the C2, the C3. Same thing. Same thing. Right so, so the uh, SJ or, or the CJ and all, those are just model delineations. That's all it is. So, but this is a 1978 CJ that is going through a restoration. You can figure this came to you uh, from the client who had kind of reached a certain spot with it. This has that textured finish on it. Uh, like Super cool you. look. Very cool. Like, I get what he was going for. Like, it's kind of like the military green. You know, it's not all the military track. spec, but it is kind of like a military green. It does have that cool, super aggressive texture coat that everybody loves nowadays. It's sort of a fad right now, um, which will soon be gone. Right? But, but you started that fad. So, yeah, a couple years ago. Yep. Um, it's been holding strong pretty good for a while now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's got the tan interior seat tan. So you kind of got that military feel to it, right? The old school style. Um, but he is at the same time modernizing the crap out of it, right? Yeah, right. It's great. The electronics, all the LED lighting, right? yes. so the things that you want to enjoy, the tilt column that's in it, the things you want to enjoy when you're out cruising, even something this old has more of a modern flair and feel to it, so you have the reliability, you don't have electronic issues, it's got the electronic ignition in it, so a lot of great things that are going to make this thing really enjoyable for him who's cruising outside the board. And yeah, this is actually going to be used in an off-road uh, fashion. He does, he does uh, wild boar hunting. We have a lot of wild boar running around down here. That's right. I mean, you have to feather those out. I'm not a hunter. You're not a hunter. And he also does alligator hunting a lot. That's right. Like so, Bob, what are you going to work on this today? So part of this restoration, it's probably a B-level restoration. It's not quite where you are, but there's a lot of good thought that went into this. Yeah, you know, these things are, um, you know, they're Jeeps, right? So Jeeps are, there's, it's, they're iconic, right? There's a massive following for them, and, uh, you know, there's a huge demand for Jeeps. However, the Jeeps have a limit to them in terms of value, right? No matter how much you put into a Jeep, it's still only going to be worth X. Correct. So, you know, understandably, right? Like, you don't want to put 50 grand into something like this. It's never going to be worth 50 on the back side. Now, maybe it's never going to attempt to sell it or get rid of it or flip it, but that's just knowing, like, is that a smart investment or not? So, sure. you know, typically, like, the 15, 20, maybe 25 range of these things is a really good number, and that gets you a really good, solid platform. Something that looks great, drives great, super fun, reliable. Um, in this case, now it's actually here at BGM for a full custom exhaust. This does have a set of headers on it. So even though it is the original 258 4.2 liter, the inline six, it actually is a split style header. So there's dual ports coming off three front cylinders and three rear cylinders. Those two have to be combined into one. They are header style flange, so we need to go two into one design into that Flowmaster 40 series and out the back nice clean look. So you're going to custom hand fabricate this exhaust, which as we learned with the Wolf Royce, uh, edition video you can see on our YouTube channel. That's right. Uh, please check it out and subscribe. Um, you'll see that lost art of hand bending uh, an exhaust system is pretty much gone, Bob. You said. Yeah, I mean, that's what it comes down to. You know, there's certain things like this that you can buy these aftermarket performance upgrades and products in terms of like off and house or intake manifolds that'll adapt with these older stuff in line sixes to a four barrel electronic car. So you get that modern performance and reliability out of it. But there's always fabrication associated with it. If you do like the you know, four barrel car design, you've got to change your throttle pedal and you've got to change your return springs and the design brackets on it. So there's a lot that has to be considered when you know, redo these modifications and upgrades. All good for the plus side of the build when it's done. But in this case, we do have to do a full custom exhaust front and rear on this. So, Bob, let's get started and check in with you as you're making the build. Sounds good. I see the vehicle's up, your welder's out, you have your welding mask at hand, and you're working underneath the vehicle. Yeah, so obviously first thing is to remove what was pre-existing, right? There's a bunch of little clamps and connectors and uh, adapter pipes all put together to try to make something happen. Um, so I removed all that stuff to start from scratch, and I've already gotten in my first 75 degree bend with my, like I mentioned, two into one Y pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and mock those pieces up. 
the spot welds on them and then keep connecting the dots from there. And then, Bub, you just kind of run from here through, will you channel up through the uh, skid plate or just walk it straight back? You'll actually hide the uh, exhaust, won't you? Yeah, it's all going to be inside the skid plate. So here we are, Bob, with the 1978 CJA. 1978 CJ. 1978 CJ5, and it's been completed. The exhaust system is now hand fabricated. Bob manufactured uh, a hand fabricated uh, two into one, or Y pipe as we call it. Why is it a Y pipe, and what did you do there? So, you know, it's uh, like we talked about earlier on before I started building this system. This is a, um, it's an aftermarket header that's on this thing, right? Not just like an original exhaust manifold, yes. like a cast iron. So this thing has, instead of a single outlet from all six cylinders into one, like a precast mold, this is actually three individual tubes that had two outlets. So you have to either do a dual exhaust system from each all the way back. This client didn't want that. He just wanted a simple two into one system that looks like a nice factory style install when it's done. It, it turned out beautiful. Yeah. Two and a one turned out beautiful. Two and a quarter size piping all the way back into a nice Flowmaster 40 series. It sounds super good. And you know what, Bob? As luck would have it, you actually ran out of some of, uh, you actually ran out of gas, did you say it was? Yep, yeah, that's the way it goes. Okay, so being gas, tell us a little bit about what it is and what you needed gas for. I suppose it's like a gasoline pump or something like that? Yeah, no, so like when you're welding, right? So you actually have like a wire speed, a heat, a temperature, and also your gas mixture that you're using. In this case, carbon and oxygen, right? So I'm trying to mix those numbers and ratios. And that's actually what performs and creates such a beautiful weld, which is not only good looking, but also super strong and super reliable. So, Bub, how did it turn out? You did a two into one wide height, and you went two into one, you went down to a, um, I can see you went into a single in, single out, single in, single out Flowmaster muffler, and then you hand fabricated a tailpipe for it as well. Yeah, that's right, man. It uh, you know, turned out great. It was a super, uh, I wouldn't say complex design, but it was a little more tricky just doing that two into one in such a tight, you know, range of area because this is still it's an original Jeep, right? So these things, 99% of them were manually transmission. You know, oh, manual right? transmission. So then you're now considering not just the size of instead of one pipe going there, you've got two pipes, so double the sizing. Plus, you're also working with like the clutch cross shaft right there from the frame to the manual transmission itself, right? So for the clutch fork is so a lot of clearances you have to work around, but it turned out beautiful. There's half inch clearance on everything under full extension, and it just operates just like it should. So, Bob, there, there's a, this, as we mentioned, this vehicle has been kind of being built by uh, the client himself. Take us through a couple of the other small things that you notice, like the accelerator linkage and stuff. And just so that people understand, when you get into a project like this, some of the things you need to be careful of. Well, you know, you got to know when to, uh, and it's, it comes down to product technology and like what you know about, you know, in the industry, right? So. In this case, right, so it's got an aftermarket intake manifold, an aftermarket exhaust manifold, the header, um, aftermarket exhaust system, aftermarket carburetor assembly. It was a single barrel, now it's a dual and two barrel. Yes. So there's a lot of things that change, and with those changes, you have to know how to incorporate factory design into aftermarket design. And, and a lot of people merge the two mesh, right? In this case, the client has an aftermarket intake carburetor assembly, right, for example, just example one. Uh, but is utilizing a stock carburetor cable or a uh, throttle cable. So there's a lot of binding in that system the way it's designed. It wasn't that the throttle, the throttle cable wasn't designed to work with that aftermarket car. In this case, like a Weber or Holly style aftermarket setup. So you do want to pull that system off there, go with an aftermarket that you know is you know functional. In our case, I would use like a low car. Okay. I put that style setup on there with the ball bearing pedal, and it would be absolutely smooth. So those are the things you kind of need to look for when a client brings in a build that he's been resurrecting himself. You also found a leak at the manifold uh, as well. Not that the work or the quality of work was bad, 
it's more that you have to have the capability, and that's one of the things that helps you stand out as one of the top in the industry today. You have a very versatile encyclopedia of knowledge in your head about how to merge the two technologies together, yeah. the old and the new. You're definitely known for that bug in our industry. Yeah, I mean, if you, uh, if you can take the time to master that, figure it out, and figure out how to make things work together, then it really makes stuff enjoyable. You it's know, another great job. You can take aftermarket products, bolt them onto something that wasn't ever designed for that setup and system, and then make them work 100%. That's exactly what you need to do. Well, Bob, congratulations. It's another great job done by you. Thank you. Right on.